So we're talking about MAT 120 intermediate algebra. We're going to discuss section 5.1, uh, simplifying rational expressions and multiplication and division. and division of rational functions. Okay, so the key to doing this, this particular section is factor and cancel. Factor, if you can, and then cancel. Sometimes it's not possible, but most of the time it will be and you just go ahead and factor the problem out and try to cancel what you can. We said it work for rational expressions and that's all we're doing is simplify. A rational expression is just a kind of a fraction that has a, a variable in it. So we refer to it as a rational expression. It's just a- Mr. Mitchell? Yeah. Um, Kendra's Wi-Fi is acting up. So can she share with you guys or? Um, she told me to tell you that her Wi-Fi is acting up. She's trying to log on right now. Oh, okay, well, when she can come on. But that's the key to it is just factor and cancel. I keep it in my, I'll, I'll write her name down, so I got it. Okay. All right, so what are we gonna do? We are going to look at a couple of problems here and see what we can do with them. I'm gonna just start in here on page, if you have your book, page um, 293. So 292. We're gonna skip some of the preliminary stuff. Just get into the nitty gritty. All right, so anyhow, um, the first problem they got is 120 over 3, 320. So how do we normally uh, simplify this? We probably try to factor out something that's common to both of them. Um, we can factor out a 10, 10 times 12, 10 times 32. So sometimes we don't say we're factoring out a 10. We just kind of think to ourselves, okay, I'm going to reduce this the top and the bottom by 10. But technically that's what we're doing. We're factoring that out. And now you have 12 and 32. We can factor a four out of both of those. Sometimes we just say, oh, I'm gonna divide this by four, that'd be three, and divide this by four, that'd be eight. But technically what we're doing is we're factoring out a four here and a four on the bottom. And those fours cancel, leaving us with three eighths. So, you know, sometimes we don't necessarily write this down, but we kind of think it in, as, in our head. Now, in some of the algebra, you do have to write it down or else, you know, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to do in your head. I'm going to try another problem that's not in your book, and let's see what we can do with this one. 16x to the fifth over 40x to the third. Okay, so what we could do on this one, everybody okay? Uh, we could factor out a four. We could take a four out of both of these. Uh, is there anything bigger? Well, there's an eight, huh? An eight would go into both of those numbers too. So we could factor that out by eight, kind of saying, okay, this is, let me write it out the long way and then I'll show you the short way, okay? This could be eight times two, and then this would be x to the third times x to the second, because we add, when we multiply like bases, we add exponents. On the bottom, we could have eight times five, and then x to the third. Well, that's a lot of work, you know, but this is technically what we're doing. We're canceling out those eights. We're ending up with two fifths. And here the x to the third cancels out to the x to the third. So anything that matches up on the top and the bottom equals one. And so we get two fifths x squared. 
However, you know, most of the time we're not going to do that much work on a problem that's that's like this that doesn't have any addition or subtraction. In it. It's just a a monomial term and another monomial term. We're going to just divide both of these by eight. Sometimes I just jot the eight down. That would be two fifths. And then we can subtract the exponents. Five take away three is two. And since the larger exponent is on the top, the x squared will go on the top. So, you know, usually we don't go through all this work. This is a lot of work for a simple problem. So let me try another one here. I just make up one. Let's see, maybe we got something. I can't see one in the book. I'm going to try one like this. 5x squared over 25x to the fifth, OK? So we can see 5 and 25. We could reduce those by 5, right? So we're factoring out a 5. We ends up with a 1. Factoring out a 5 here, end up with a 5. So technically, when you're reducing, you're factoring out that 5. And then 2 from 5 is 3. The larger exponent's on the bottom. So your final exponent should be in the denominator. 1 over 5x cubed. OK. Does that make any sense? I hope so. All right. Most of the time, what we're going to be doing, however, is a little bit more complicated than that. If we're going to have terms that are binomials, and so let me take a look at a problem here. Let's suppose we had this problem. This is uh, example 10 in your book. Okay, so here we have a binomial over a binomial. There's a lot of x squares and x's going on and numbers, and we don't want to, but they're also combined by using a plus sign. So in a problem like this, we have to do some basic factoring. We're going to take out on the, on the top one, let's just factor out a 2 and an x. And that would leave me with x plus 2. OK, 2 goes into 2 one time, x1, x2, we subtract the exponents. And so we get it. On this bottom, we want to do basic factoring. We're going to take out a 2x also. And we get 3x plus 1. OK, then we try to reduce what we can. Since both of these factors are, are identical, we can cross those off and go into each other one time. So our final answer would be x plus 2 over 3x plus 1. We can't factor those. You can't factor just part of this. You, when it's combined with an addition, it has to be the whole thing or nothing at all. Like maybe you could reduce the x's, but you can't reduce the 2. You can't do that. It has to be the whole thing. You have to reduce the whole quantity. So you can't just reduce a part of it when it has an addition. OK, let's try another one. Suppose I had something as simple as this, 24 over 9x minus 6. OK, so on the bottom, I would probably take out an, a 3, huh? x minus 2. So I factor out a 3 out of both of these terms. And now I can kind of reduce. I can divide 3 into 24 because this 3 is now outside of the parentheses. I couldn't, couldn't cancel like the 6 into the 24 because it's kind of inside of parentheses. This is outside. So this would be, I can divide both of these by 3. Factor out a 3 out of both of them. So I end up with 8 over x minus 2. So 24 over 9x minus 6, you, you can't just simply say, oh, that's uh, 4 over 9x or something like that, negative 4 over 9x. And you divided those numbers. You can't do it that way. We'll give you the right answer. OK, and then sometimes we end up with a little bit tougher problem. 
where we have to do our more complicated factoring. Huh? So here we have x squared minus one over two x squared minus x minus one. So here I'm gonna factor out the x squared minus one into x minus one, x plus one. I'm gonna recognize that difference of squares patterns. Difference of squares pattern. Okay, here I don't see a specific pattern. So I might use the X method on it, trying to figure it out. Okay, two times one is a negative two. This is a negative one. One times two is two. To make a negative one, I need a negative two. One times negative two is negative two, and I get a negative one. So I could factor the denominator into, well, I'm gonna put this intermediate step under this, 2x, 2x, remember we need to write that down twice if we're doing this x method, plus one, minus two. So this is gonna give me 2x plus one, and I'm gonna factor this out, take it out of two, and I get x minus one. So on this problem, after it's completely factored, we try to find like terms that are exactly the same and we can cancel those off. So that's where the factor and the cancel come in. We can cancel those x plus one over two x plus one. Now in a problem like this, sometimes it's easier just to do trial and error factoring. Let me try it again. We do some, just some basic trial and error, two x and one x. We know that's got to be a one and a one, and where you place your negatives is important. Um, we wanted the middle term to be minus, so the rainbow or the outside terms are going to give me that negative one. That'll be a negative two x. This would be a positive one x. I need a negative one x for the middle term. And then x squared minus one was x minus one, x plus one and we see they cancel off. All right, so that's basically the idea behind it, that, that you're gonna to try to factor these and try to cancel them as much as you can. All right, let's try another one here. So I see this problem right here. I can't really uh, solve it without factoring it out. But always look for something basic before you jump into the real more difficult factoring. I think I can take a three out of the top out of all those terms. And so maybe you could take a variable. Uh, I'm looking at X, but this doesn't have an X. So I'm just gonna take factor out of three gives me 3x squared minus 2xy minus y squared. And on the bottom I have, I could take a 12 out of there in fact, get x squared minus y squared. Okay, now I'm gonna factor it down some more. I'm gonna leave the three and the 12 right now. I could reduce that right now because I've already factored it out, but I'll go ahead and leave it like this. I'm going to do trial and error. So this would be 3x, x, 3x squared, y, y. And I need a negative 2xy. So outside, 3xy. Inside, xy. I need to make a negative 2xy. So this would probably be a negative up here and a positive here. This was the rainbow, so that sign goes right here and the plus sign here. Now I'm gonna factor out the bottom. I see that's difference of squares, x plus y, x minus y. So now I can go ahead and cancel. These go into each other one time. So they cancel each other off. Whenever you have the same number on the top and the bottom, it equals one. And here I can reduce this down to one fourth. So my final answer is gonna be three X plus Y 
over four times x plus y. I could go ahead and distribute that out if I wanted to, but I, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it in factor form. Okay. I guess I copied this a little different from the book. They had a plus sign there. I have a minus, but you see it. It worked out. Okay, another thing I want to show you. <clears throat> uh, sometimes you have, like if you had x plus y and you had over y plus x, that means the same thing. x plus y over y plus x, you can rearrange those terms on the bottom. Those would cancel out. Now, if everything cancels out like you just did, the answer is one, not, not zero. Okay, you don't leave it blank. Okay, because this goes into itself once and it also goes into uh, X, X plus Y goes into X plus Y once. So it's, it's one over one, which is one. Okay, but sometimes you're gonna encounter something like this. And here you can't just switch them around. You can with addition, but with subtraction, you're not, you're not allowed to kind of switch it around. So we use a little trick um, called a negative one trick. And what we do is we factor out a negative one out of here. I'm going to do it the long way and show you uh, what happens. But then, then I show you the shortcut. Okay, so if I take a negative one out of here, this becomes a negative eight, and this becomes a positive x. Then I can rearrange them, and this becomes x minus eight and a negative one here. So then these cancel, and I have, if everything's gone there, they go into each other one time, I have one over negative one, or the final answer would be negative one. Now, the shortcut would be this. To recognize that, and just simply say, oh, I'm gonna take out a negative one, and I'm just gonna switch these two. Now it becomes x minus 8, you see. And that's exactly what happened here. But we can bypass this step. Factor out a negative 1, it switches. This only works for a binomial, but this comes up quite often. And these cancel out, and you have 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So we call this the negative one trick. We switch it around, which makes it a lot easier to do the problem. We'll put this up a little bit higher and maybe write a little bit bigger. Huh? OK, so let's see what we can do on another problem here. OK, let's see if I have one more that I could do with fat, basic factoring, and then we'll get into a tougher one. Uh, let's see. Well, they do have a problem like, uh, like number uh, 32. A squared minus B squared. This is off the assignment. Uh, a cubed plus B cubed. So this is kind of a tricky one. You might not remember this pattern. Remember the pattern for A squared minus B squared? It was A minus B, A plus B. Well, what's the pattern for a cubed, b cubed? You know, that one's a little bit tougher one. Oops, your pins are flying. Okay, so we have, we would probably write this as a plus b, cube root, cube root. And then remember, we developed this parentheses. It was a square, multiply these together, opposite, and then a square. So now it's factored completely. The a plus b cancels out the a plus b. Your final answer would be a minus b over a squared minus a b plus b squared. So that went a little bit harder. You know, this pattern that you don't recognize quite as often. 
this one you should recognize the difference of squares. So that's the key to do it, doing it is factor and cancel. Okay, now I'm gonna look at some multiplication and basically the same rule applies, factor and cancel. It's just that you have a lot more terms. Okay, let's try one here. Uh, let's try this problem right up here. This is on the top of page 296, x plus two, example 14 over x minus three times x squared minus four over x squared plus two a plus x minus two. So the key is to factor this thing out. Well, on these two, there's nothing you can factor out, a one or something like that. So not much you can do there. Here we could factor x squared minus four into x minus two, x plus two. And on the bottom, we can factor this down just using trial and error or the x method. This would be x and x. This would be a two and a one. I need a, a positive two. So this would be plus and this would be minus like that. Then I see, uh, I wanna cancel out. I wanna see what can I cancel, okay. With this x plus two on the bottom, I can either cancel out this x plus two or this x plus two. I can't cancel them both. So you have to make a decision. I'm gonna do the one right over it. And this would be my answer. And, I, and you can just leave it factored. x plus two times x minus two times over x plus three, x minus one. Because sometimes we, we have more to do to this problem. So if you leave it in factored form, it's a lot easier. So the, the key on this problem is factor out what you can, cancel. I could even cancel this x plus two with this x plus two. That would have been okay. Just so I cancel out something on the bottom and something on the top if they match up. Okay. Let's try another problem here. I'm trying to find a decent pen and having all kinds of problems. Let's try this. Okay, I, I don't want to do the cube run, but because cubed uh, pattern, I'm not going to give you one that, that difficult. So I'm going to pull one off the homework here. here this one looks pretty tough. Let me pull this piece of paper off. I need the ball. No, I just. Okay, you ready? Let's try this number 57. We have x squared minus 16 over x squared minus 10x, should be a 16, uh, plus 25. And this was a division problem. I didn't want to hit division. So I'm going to hit times and just Write it like this, okay. So I'm doing a little doctoring of this problem. Anyhow, this is the problem I want to factor. It's not quite 57. See that, okay. Can you see my big hand? Okay. All right, so let's factor out. Factor and cancel. Factor like crazy. X minus four, X plus four. On the bottom, x squared minus 25. I'm recognizing this as a difference of squares, a perfect square trinomial. Square root of 25 is five, five squared is 10. So the faster you can recognize it, it's easier. If you don't, then it's gonna be x times x, five times five, and they're gonna both be negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, this one trial and error x and x. Here's a negative 10 and a negative three. I need a five and a two. So I need a negative five and a positive two. So x minus five, x plus two. They don't have to be in any particular order. And finally, I take a three out of there. And this is where the fun begins. Now that the problem's all factored, now we can start to cancel. 
Uh, this x minus five is gonna cancel off one of these. It doesn't matter which one. X minus five, something on the top, something on the bottom. I can't cancel these two terms off with each other. There has to be a top number, numerator and denominator. Okay, x minus four goes into itself once, x minus four once. Anything else we see? No. So this will be the final answer. It's going to be x plus four times x plus two. And don't forget, sometimes you can lose this little three in the shuffle. Three times x minus five. It's just that easy. Factor, factor completely, then cancel. Factor, cancel. Three, not, not, uh, too bad. Okay, I'm going to show you a division problem. <clears throat> a squared minus one over a minus one. See, this is a very tempting problem where students like to say, oh, I, this becomes a minus one. And it might, but we want to factor it out first before we kind of jump to any conclusions. Divided by a squared minus two a plus one over a plus one. So step number one is on a division is a little different from multiplication. Remember division, we have to invert and multiply. We have to find a reciprocal of this term, multiplicative inverse of this term, whatever you wanna call it, flip it over. And do that first before you start factoring. So you're gonna invert it. Freaky Friday, the, uh, the numerator becomes the denominator, the denominator becomes the numerator. Okay, so just flip it over. Okay, now once it's flipped, let's factor like crazy. A squared minus one, that would be A plus one, A minus one. A minus one can't do anything to that. So now leave that alone times a plus one. And now I'm going to factor out that denominator. That will be a and a one and one and plus and plus. And you can double check if you did it right by doing a FOIL. And I'm wrong because see, I see this as a minus. So this would have to be a negative one and a negative one. Okay. So we have to be a little careful about the signs. Okay, so what cancels? Uh, I got a lot of A minus ones, but I don't have uh, very many A plus ones. So apparently the way I'm looking at it is the only thing that would cancel is this. Let's make sure I copy this correctly. I flipped it over, right? So I have the a plus one on top, a plus one, a minus one, a minus one, a minus one, a minus one. So I'm gonna cancel off any of these a minus ones. I'm just gonna cancel off this one and this one. I don't know why. So I end up with a plus one, a plus one. Well, I could write that as a plus one squared if I wanted to. And then here's an a minus one, a minus one. I could write that as a minus one squared if I wanted to. So I could write the answer that way, or I could write it like the book shows, a plus one, a plus one, a minus one, a minus one. Either answer is okay. Because sometimes on a test, you might encounter this answer instead of this one. See so on a standardized test. Okay. See if we can try a couple more of these divisions. You know, they have a bunch of cube patterns and we don't want to really get too much into the cube patterns. This one looks like a fairly difficult problem. This is number 57. I think I just did that one. Okay, we don't want to do that one. Let's try 58. Basically, I've done 57. Yeah, let's try 58. A squared minus 36 over 
y squared minus 36 over y squared minus 8y plus 16 divided by, this is a good one, 3y minus 18 and y minus y squared minus y minus 12. All right, kind of copied. So first of all, I want to flip it. There is, I think students don't like these problems because there is quite a bit of writing on them. That's, that's the uh, bad part about these problems. Um, we're trying to streamline it as much as we can, but, but unfortunately there is quite a bit of writing. Now, what you have to do is also, you have to do a lot of pattern recognition. You have to recognize this pattern as being difference of squares Put it over here, y minus six, y plus six. You might recognize this as a perfect square trinomial. If not, you just want to use a sheet of scratch paper and try factoring that out, you know. Where I might, might try, okay, this is going to be a 16 and I need a negative eight. So to get 16, it would be four times four. And they both would have to be negative, huh? And I could see if it works here. Y minus four, Y minus four. You know, so I could play around with uh, using that method or trial and error or whatever. I'm gonna write this down. So we have to be careful about signs. How about y squared minus y minus 12? Again, on scratch, scratch paper, you got a negative 12 and a negative one y. So four times three, that to give you a positive. I need a negative, so I need a negative four plus three and a negative four times three. So again, you know, just on scratch paper, you might fool around with it. And this will give you y minus four and y plus three. Then on the bottom, what about this one? There's no square in the problem. So on this one, we wanna just take out something basic. And sometimes you forget about doing that. That'll be y times y minus six. Okay. Now that it's all factored, we can try to see if we can cancel off anything. And there seems to be a couple of things we can get rid of the y minus fours. And I can get rid of a y minus six. And that's pretty much it, huh? So it's gonna be y plus six, y plus three over three times y minus four. So sometimes you have to use a little scratch paper to kind of kind of do your factoring with, you know. All right. Let's try one more here. A little bit heavier duty one. Uh, this is um, number 67. I sh I'll write it out kind of like how I'd like to see it in your papers. y squared minus 2y Write down the problem, y squared plus y minus two times y minus one over y squared plus four y plus four. So before I even begin factoring, I'm kind of thinking to myself, what am I gonna do here? Uh, I see this term won't be one that I can even factor. This looks like I can take out just a y. Here, I think trial and error and this one I'm thinking perfect square trinomial or trial and error. Okay, so this one I'm figuring I'm gonna take out a, just a basic y. Okay, the other thing before I jump into this problem, I'm gonna ask myself, do I need to fact, do I need to flip this thing over? No, this is a multiplication problem, so I don't have to flip. I don't wanna get crazy doing that. Y minus two. And I might as well go ahead and factor out the bottom. And again, maybe you're just using a sheet of scratch paper. Um, 
I need a negative two when I multiply and I need a positive one. So <clears throat> to get a negative two, I have to multiply one times two to end up with a positive two, positive one, I need a two minus one. That should work, huh? So this is gonna be y minus one and y plus two. See, it looked like those would have been canceling, but apparently not. Now this bottom one, this top one factor, what about the bottom? I see that's probably gonna be y and y. And I'm kind of thinking, okay, I got y squared plus four, y plus four. I'm thinking four and four, two times two, huh? plus two and plus two. So now it's all factored out. And unfortunately, I still had that um, y squared minus two. And I'm gonna double check this one, make sure I copied it correctly. Uh, I think I did. This had to come out with a positive two. Hmm. So let's see what we can do on this part. I guess there was another part to this, but I'm just doing this much of it. So the y plus twos, uh, not much is gonna cancel, just this y minus one, huh? And that would be all that could cancel. So this is, leave it factored, y times y minus two. And if you want to, see you got one, two, three of these, you could write y plus two to the third, or you can write it as y plus two y plus two, y plus two. I, I didn't see there was another part to this problem. Let's see, when I was copying it, it had a division part to it, and uh, that's okay. We'll try one more miserable problem, and that should be it. Okay. This one is, is a pretty tough one. See, we can do this one, we can do any of them, huh? I try to be more careful about copying this too. This is number 63 in your book. And you can see this is a fairly difficult problem. Just copying it is hard enough. Okay, so I'm gonna do a bunch of basic factoring to begin with. Um, eight and 27, nothing to go in those, but I do notice they both have an X cubed, so I'm gonna take that out. And this will leave me with eight Y cubed plus 27. So it looks like that infamous um, cube pattern. How about on the bottom? I see an X cubed can come out of there. And I end up with 64Y cubed minus one. One is a perfect square, one's a perfect cube, one's a perfect fourth. You know, one comes up a lot. I should have flipped this over and I didn't. Now, what you could do, because I failed to flip it over, is just jot it above it, huh? It should be 16x squared y squared plus 4x squared y plus x squared over 4x squared y squared minus 9x squared. So I'll cross that off. I should have flipped it over at the word flip. All right, so what about this mess? Hmm. Well, I see I can take out an x squared. And that leaves me with 16x y squared plus 4y plus 1. Okay. What about the bottom? Again, I could take out an x squared, which leaves me with 4y squared minus 9. So I did some basic factoring. Now I got to go back and do more 
um, advanced factoring, trinomial or binomial factoring. So here I see difference of cubes. That's that cube root plus cube root times the difference of these. Uh, it's going to be a square. Multiply these together, 6y opposite sign minus 6y and then square plus 9. So a square opposite square. On the bottom, it's going to be x cubed. Again, and 64 is a little bit harder when it's going to be 4 times 4 times 4. So this is going to be 4y minus 1 squared, 16y squared, Multiply together, negative 4y, change the sign, plus 4y. These always have opposite signs right there. And then the last term is always positive, plus 1. Okay, what about this one? 4y, 4y, 1, and 1. But you see, that would give me 8y. And I only have a 4y, but now if I look at the bottom, see how there's a matchup? So this one does not actually factor, does it? It looked like it factored, but it didn't. So we don't want to get factored crazy. What about on the bottom? Yes, 2y minus 3, 2y plus 3, difference of squares. All right, now it's all factored out. And see, this, this large trinomial will cancel out this trinomial. 2y plus 3 cancels out the 2y plus 3. This looks like it would factor some more, huh? But this would have to be a 12 for this to factor. So I think that's all we can do. Now, these x cubes are cancel out x cubes, and x squares are cancel out x squares. So my final answer is going to be 4y squared minus 6y plus 9 over 4y minus 1 times 2y minus 3. And that's what I'm going to call my final answer. Let's double check it, and that is the correct answer. So right here, I, I thought I could factor it out. Then I realized that that won't work because that would give me a 8. But then I noticed that these two were the same, so I could cancel them. So sometimes if a problem won't, won't necessarily cancel, that's, that's not terrible. It still might work as far as, I mean, would not necessarily factor. It still might cancel. Okay, so that's the idea behind these. Factor like crazy and then cancel if you can. Look for something basic, then go into your more advanced factoring.